Hey, welcome to the gavel, Amninda Akibi. The National Assembly finally resumed plenary after a six-week break, and I must say federal lawmakers resumed with a bang. The resumption of plenary was eagerly anticipated. Many Nigerians wanted to see if there would be tension in both chambers because of the leadership tussle and how lawmakers would react to the trial of a Senate president at the Code of Conduct Tribunal. So let's go back and see how it went down in the National Assembly on Resumption Day. After a six week recess, this is what greets federal lawmakers and staff of the National Assembly on Resumption. Protesters trying to make their voices heard. The claim that the trial of a Senate president before the Code of Conduct Tribunal over alleged false declaration of assets is a distraction to the Senate. You can see that very soon that they will bring the list of the ministers. So nothing should distract this. You can see nothing is moving in this country. So we should stop this distracting the initial assembly. We should allow them to do their job. Inside the Senate chamber, the mood is calm and the first plenary session begins. The Senate president, in his welcome address, did not shy away from talking about his legal battle. I have no iota of doubt that the trial today is because I am the president of the Nigerian Senate against the wishes of certain people outside these chambers. The laws of Nigeria does not give any consideration to any other forces outside the Senate in the election of its president. In an unexpected move, 83 lawmakers passed a vote of confidence on the Senate president and the Senate leadership. This is the second time an overwhelming number of senators are passing a vote of confidence on the Senate president in spite of a controversy facing the Senate president. The legislative arm of government remains the mainstay of democratic governance, liberty, freedom, fair hearing, checks and balances, and above all, the protection of human rights of the citizenry. That the Senate determined to focus on matters of national interest and importance to the ordinary people of Nigeria and other issues that will enhance their safety, livelihood, social and political well-being that the distinguished Senate further determined to continue to perform its constitutional duties and responsibilities in defense of democracy and the rule of law for the betterment and development of our nation, Nigeria. That the Senate notes with dismay the attempt and continued interference in the internal affairs of the Senate by detractors and media propaganda against senators, the Senate and its leadership by selfish politicians. Considering the ongoing unwarranted embarrassment and aspersions being cast on the Senate and its leadership, the Senate is determined that the Senate shall not allow itself to be distracted, deterred, or succumb to cheap blackmail in the course of carrying out its constitutional responsibilities by any individual or group of people under any pretense or guise for personal political interest. This distinguished Senate affirms its right to determine its internal affairs. The Senate hereby resolves to pass a vote of confidence on A, the President of the Senate Senator Dr. Abubakar Bukola Saraki, the Deputy President of the Senate, Senator Ike Ekwere Madu, the entire Senate leadership as presently constituted. But after the vote of confidence was passed, a federal lawmaker raised a point of order on that matter. My name has been listed on this motion as number 11, Senator Jidi Omoorare. Ordinarily, I would have known as the chairman of the Committee on Rules and Business, by virtue of Order 97 Rule 2. But since it came under a matter of urgent public importance, under Order 42, and I believe Order 52, I wouldn't know, and I don't know, and I don't know that my name is on it. I wish to move, Mr. President, sir, that my name is Tucker. Mr. President, I'm referring to the motion that we have just taken. And that was 
why I raised the point of order before Mr. President put his question. Distinguished Senator Marva, can you read 53.6? Yes. Read. 53.6. I come under order 53.5. I know. Six. Say read 53. You've read. So I'm asking you now to read 53.6. Uh, well, uh, you, ruled, you, you decided, sir, in your own wisdom, yes, not to accept my point of order. I came under this point of order before the Senate took its position. And uh, I think, the, this, as a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I have a right to state my own position as far as this thing is concerned. Please, your refusal. Please, your refusal to read 53.6. I have no other attorney than to rule you out of order. Would you respect that? You have not had me. You have not had Leader of the Senate. Senate. I don't have. I don't have. I will not. Who said you are going to? My friend, you are making noise. With calm restored, the Deputy Senate Nigeria President apologized on behalf of Senator Marafa. I apologize to Nigerians on behalf of Marafa because this is very embarrassing. And I believe that this might be the last time we have this happen in the Senate. From 1999 to today, there are provisions in our rule for suspending a senator for being unruly. But for once, it has really been applied in this Senate. And that was the case of uh, Senator Atom Zeribe. And we don't wish to have that happen again. It was quite difficult, because the senator here is entitled to represent his people. But in doing so, there must be some decorum. So I'd like to appeal that senators don't push their colleagues to circumstances they must begin to think about the application of that provision. The day ended on a calm note, but it is clear that this matter would continue to generate a lot of reactions from within and outside the National Assembly. As is customary, the Senate President delivers a welcome address on resumption of plenary. His resumption speech sets an agenda for the upper chamber. Watch. As we resume today, we must demonstrate clearly to Nigerians that we are prepared to fulfill our mandates and put Nigeria first in all that we do, no matter how we feel about anything else. To behave contrary will amount to a betrayal of the confident response on us by our constituencies and our country as a whole. Let me seize this opportunity to register my deep sadness over the death of the yet to be determined number of pilgrims who lost their lives in the tragic events that happened in Saudi Arabia during this year's Hajj pilgrimage. May the Almighty Allah grant them eternal salvation and comfort their families. On the 17th of September 2015, we woke to the shocking news of a military coup in Burkina Faso. This is a monster which we had thought had been wiped off the West African political landscape forever. I therefore commend the prompt response of the leaders of the ECOWAS, in particular our own president, President Buhari, not only in unanimously condemning the coup, but in pushing hard to ensure that the constitutional order is restored in that country. A threat to democracy anywhere is a threat to democracy everywhere. We must therefore remain vigilant and leave no one in doubt that our only, that only democratically elected government will be accepted in our continent and in our sub-region. Distinguished colleagues, during the recess, I had the opportunity to attend with some of our colleagues the Inter-Parliamentary Union Conference in New York, United States. The high point of that visit for me was a conversation on Boko Haram and the mobilization of global support for Nigeria especially in dealing with the serious challenges of internally displaced persons and the overall development of the northeast of our country. I argued that the significant military success 
that had been achieved under President Mohamed Bari must now be complemented by a robust economic strategy in form of a global infrastructure and development fund that can deliver the vital services needed by our IDPs today. And the key infrastructure they will need to live a more meaningful and more secured life in the future. Homes, hospitals, schools, and of course jobs. Thank you.